Hello, YouTube friends. Gail's here. Um, we're going to be playing some more rewritten uh, today. Let's see. I'm going to do... Uh, Yeah, so I'm going to try to get uh, Amos' route because I took their quiz and that's what I got. And of all the characters, Amos feels the most like the type I'd probably go for in real life. He, he reminds me the most of Ken, so obviously he seems like my type. So kind of curious to see his. Uh, of course, I want to play all of them but eventually, but I think I want to do Amos next. So yeah, I'm going to reload it here and hopefully... Uh, that's what we can get, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Amos and Nightshade, okay. There's got to be something I can help with. Oh, Nightshade and Amos are cleaning out the front desk. I think they'll need my keys to get to the cash register. They seem to be hard at work already. Nightshade is busy wiping down the counter while Amos sorts out the huge pile of paperwork that was hiding in the shelves. I wonder if book people get tired. Wait, should I have offered them something to drink? Do, bo do book people drink things? Or would they melt away like a piece of paper? I stare at them for a minute, contemplating every possible logistical question all at once until Nightshade's voice drags me back to reality. Kindly keep out of my cleaning area. I'm just trying to lend you a hand. You missed a pretty big chunk over there. Uh-oh. Are people fighting already? Hey guys, is everything going okay here? Oh yeah. Vince and I are just getting to know each other. I think he's pretty swell. How many PhDs did you say you have? Nightshade's eye twitches when Amos calls him Vince. <laughs> I have seven PhDs. Not that I need any of them to be qualified to wipe a table on my own. Thank you. Nightshade tries to hip check Amos out of the way to reach the other end of the counter, but Amos doesn't seem to notice. You hear that, Gales? Seven PhDs, and so young. He's gotta be some kind of genius or something. Amos claps Nightshade on the back, and Nightshade is smashed flat against the counter. Amos! You! I follow Nightshade's horrified gaze down to where one of the counter's drawers has burst open. Ah, gross. The inside is covered top to bottom with a thick carpet of green mold. Ew. <laughs> Ugh. Nightshade looks like he's gonna throw up. Oh, yucksville. Must be kind of interesting to you, though. Right, Vince? Since you're a plant guy. Nightshade turns violently to face Amos, his face flushed with anger. I study vascular plants, noble ones with dignity to stand using their own tugor. Turgor. Whatever. <laughs> I would never spend a moment of my time with barely evolved slime molds. So, you don't know what that's called? You. I probably wouldn't want to study those things either. Mm, yuck. Oh, well, now I'm starting to feel bad for the little guy. Everybody's teaming up against him. Aw. <laughs> well, now that you say that, Amos, it was just minding its own business there. It's not a him, it's an it, Amos. Yeah, it was just minding its own business. Even if it is gross. <laughs> Don't you fall for that anth anthropomorphizing garbage, Gales. <laughs> Amos turns to Nightshade and shoots him a wide-eyed, pleading gaze. Aww. Nightshade shoves his face away with a shudder. <laughs> or that puppy dog act. <laughs> then you leave us no choice. Freedom! <laughs> with a, a startling cry, Amos rips the drawer out of the counter and runs out the door. <laughs> I grin and chase after him. Freedom! <laughs> That's great. We run down the street, whooping victoriously, until Ammo screeches to a sudden halt, and I slam right into him. Hang on. Uh, I think this is littering. Huh. Yeah. We look at each other sadly, then at the moldy drawer. The dumpster is kind of like its natural habitat, right? Yeah, 
I mean, if a mold is gonna grow anywhere, it's a, on a pile of trash. We trek over to the dumpster behind the shop and place the moldy drawer gently on the top pile of trash. Here you go, little fella. Amos plucks an old banana peel out of the tr pile and puts it on top of the mold. A snack for the road. This is kind of sad, you know, to say goodbye so soon. Amos pats me gently on the shoulder and gives me an understanding look. Don't be so sad. It's not like this is his funeral or anything. I can fix that. Before either Amos or I could react, Nightshade pulls the trigger on his gun, sending a beam of light into the dumpster and igniting a massive fire. Oh gosh! <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, I called it. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'll get over it. You people are so quick to form bonds with the most ridiculous of things. That slop was probably a biohazard. Well... He was our biohazard. <laughs> Aww. After we are done cleaning, the shop seems a little more put together. It's easier to imagine it open, but still, would I really be able to achieve that by Monday? So, when are we being fed? Don't be rude. But he's right, I'm hungry. So now we're merging back into the uh, universal route. So we've already seen this, but that's okay. I'll, I'll read it again. Why not? Yeah, we should grab some grub. Pizza? Bless you! No, it's a food... N never mind. Huh. Do not worry. I will make us a feast. I don't think we have that many ingredients around. We follow Klaus up to the kitchen. There's some snack foods littered around the counters, but nothing you could make a dinner out of, at least now that I've graduated college. I can make us a meal out of anything. Klaus walks over to the refrigerator to see what he had to work with. <laughs> Empty fridge. Uh, mm, perhaps not. <clears throat> uh, we'll go grocery shopping tomorrow. I could go for some pizza for a pizza. It's been a while since I got a nice pie. I look around and everyone seems to be nodding along, even if some of their faces clearly have no idea what he's talking about. Ooh, pies! Let's get apple! I'm a strawberry man myself. Uh, pizza is a savory food. It's got, like, cheese. I'm sure you guys will like it. Everyone likes pizza, as long as no one has any allergies. Amos looks around the crowd, but most of them look confused. What is an a weakness. One I will not be sharing with the likes of you. So, is that a yes or a no on the allergies? Don't put any cheese on mine. It took some time, but we settled on four large pizzas and a smaller one for Dr. Nightshade. Oh boy, this is going to eat up the money my auntie left, still. It's sort of nice seeing it eating together like this. What a... Uh, <clears throat> what the charming food stuff! Hmm. Klaus still seems to be haunted by what he saw in the fridge. Aye, this pie is magnificent. Mac is three quarters of the way through a large pizza and eating like he's expecting one of the others to swoop down and swipe his plate from him. Maybe because he's eyeing Rosamel's leftovers. Good thing we got so many pizzas. Nisha keeps picking toppings off of his pizza. He's the one who picked them. You don't like the onions or the tomatoes? Normally, I prefer my own strains of vegetables. These are subpar. Oh, what kind of nor vegetables do you normally have? Strain A17B52 is particularly good with this kind of carbohydrate-based food. Strain A17... Sorry. It's kind of a bitter leaf vegetable based on crops found in the Andromeda galaxy. It's hardly hardy in low temperatures, which makes it ideal for cultivation. He has a lot to say about his work with space plants that honestly, I don't understand. He looks really happy to have someone listen to him though. You sure are knowledgeable about pizza, buddy. Mm. And that brief happiness is gone. 
Still, it's nice to have such a lively meal. Food always tastes better when you share it with other people. It's sort of funny how quickly we've begun to get along, like we had known each other for a long time. Pretty soon the pizza is gone and they file out of the kitchen. The day was over and as extraordinary as it was, I think it was a good one. Beep, 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 beep. My alarm goes off and I groan, hiding my head under the pillow. Shut up, I'm sleeping. I try to sleep without turning it off, just in case I can get away with not moving a muscle for the next 15 minutes. Beep, 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 beep. Turn off that blasted racket. Gail's sleeping, doctor. Shh. Not my fault. I hear heavy trampling outside my door then. Bam, bam, bam. Wake up, Gales, or at least silence that noise. Well, here's to a brand new day. I get dressed quickly and head to the kitchen, still rubbing sleep from my eyes. Everyone else seems to be there already, but at different stages of awakeness. Good morning, Gales. Sleep well? Hello! Don't you look radiant today? Mm, morning. Also, hmm. What took you so long? Morning, guys. Ugh, don't let you look chipper. Mm. Well, some of you. What's on the docket for today, Gales? Uh... I take out the crumpled schedule out of my pocket and squint at it. To-do list! Day one, clean up the place! Taken care of. Day two, buy supplies! See back of notes for what list of what we need. Looks like we gotta go shopping. I hear a few stomachs growl. And I think we better go soon. I'm starving. I'll be keen to keep cleaning around the shop while you're gone. I hate dealing with fishmongers and the like. Hmm. And I'm going back to sleep. I was up till all hours last night working. Oh no, I'm not carrying all the groceries back alone. I'll help. Me too. Thank you, but no exceptions. Everyone, be ready in the car in 20 minutes. We were all packed up and ready to go in about 45 minutes. It was a tight fit in the car, but we made it. I don't know how much space there's going to be for groceries, though. Okay, guys. Well, now that we're here, I think it's time for a little divide and conquer. Always a good strategy for catching your enemies unawares. Yeah, well, in this case, our enemies are tomatoes. We need supplies for the display case and food for our... food. So let's split into two teams. Mac, Nightshade, and Klaus begin to grumble amongst themselves while Amos and Rosamel listen with rapt attention. Okay, guys, how about Rosamel and I go find all the craft supplies while Klaus and Nightshade put their cooking and botany skills together to pick out the fire freshest ingredients for Gales? Mmm. And why don't you tag along with them, Mac? It'll be good for you to socialize. Hmm. That's so. Uh, yeah. Great idea, Amos. What should I do? You can go with whoever you like. Okay, I'm gonna go get like a dozen toothbrushes because I assume that you guys didn't pack any. Do you still need to brush your teeth? Being fictional and all, I mean. They all look at me. Yes? No? What's that? Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna grab a lot of soap on too while I'm at it. We disperse and I head off to the hygiene aisle. After I grab what I need here, I'll catch back up with one of the groups. I'll go join... Rosamel and Amos. With my cart packed full of hygienic necessities, I head off towards the craft section of the store. Amos and Rosamel stand in the middle of the aisle, looking a little dazed. Hey guys, how's it going? You find everything on the list? Yep, yeah, but we had some more ideas. Right, you'll really like them. Cool, lay it on me. I don't know how my aunt would feel about us going off script for the display, but I guess she wouldn't have left me in charge if she was too uptight about it. Besides, if they describe something awful, I can gently veto it. Well, I was thinking it might be nice to usher in the light season, or uh, usher in the season with a uh, arch plastic leaves lit up with LED lights and a cornucopia of bu books at the book bottom. That sounds really cool. 
That certainly sounds enchanting the way you say it, Amos. Though, I must confess, I had an idea or two of my own. Oh? Don't worry, it was a silly idea. Nonsense, I'd like to hear it. Thinking seasonally, I imagine we bend a bow of eternal ivy, all dusted with star glow, over a bag of holding overflowing with books. He laughs, then seems confused when we don't. Don't you like it? See, a bag of holding can never be full. It shows just how many books we've got. Uh, uh, wow, that does sound great. I just, I don't know where we find any of that stuff. I understand your concern. I have had much the same one about your idea. We can't expect poor girls to find all those fantastical objects in the space of one day. My materials should be available at any of the nearest wizard's huts. Oh, are they? They both laughed. I can't tell if they're being supportive or passive-aggressive now. Maybe we can mix the two ideas? Both of them fixed me with a shocked stare, as if they almost had forgotten I was there. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Oh, I would never dream of to intrude upon Emma's artistic vision. Don't be silly. I bet you're more artistic than me. Aren't you a poet? Well, sure. But the visual arts are vastly different than the written ones. You're a detective. I'm sure you've got an eye for details. Yeah, but you are so pink. Am I? Well, I, I thought so. Besides, you're a total autumn. Look at those earthly tones. Even the way you dress screams fall. Uh, I didn't realize I dressed any kind of way. It's like neither of them have ever looked in a mirror. <laughs> See, that's exactly what I mean. You gotta be some kind of aesthetic. Aesthetic? Aes a what? <laughs> I bet Dryads ask you for style tips all the time. Uh, who? It's like they're speaking two different languages, and I don't speak either. Seriously, I can't tell if they're fighting or not. <laughs> this is going nowhere fast. You're right, Gales. You should decide. Huh? Oh, perfect idea! Whose design do you prefer, hun? Uh, wait. Why do I have to choose? They both stare at me, hopefully. Ugh, double puppy dog. <laughs> puppy eyes. <laughs> Fine. Let's see. Amos wants an arch of lit up leaves with a container of books at the bottom, and Rosamel wants the same thing. Huh? Simplifying it, they want the same design, they're just using different terms. And yet, I don't know if that's going to make my job easier or harder. We have the same idea, I think. I like Amos's plan, I like Rosamel's plan. Uh, let's do the top one, because I mean, it's true. What? A lit up arch of leaves with a container at the bottom full of books representing plenty, right? That was what I was thinking. That's it exactly! They look at each other and laugh again. Well, that settles things nicely, doesn't it? What a relief. Was it a fight? Well, let's go get the materials we need. I better stick with them to avoid any other miscommunications. We managed to get everything we needed from the store and somehow make it back to the bookshop in one trip. Once everything had been put in its proper place, the guys turned to me for guidance. What now? That's all we had to get to done today, so I guess we get the rest of the day off. Once again, we're back to the universal route. Finally, a break. If you need us for anything else, just tell us. I won't have to. I'm going on break too. I need to relax. Well, if you need us for any help relaxing, just tell us. Heh. <laughs> Alright. The boys scatter and I return to my room. I flop on my bed and scroll through my phone for a while. 
The time gets away from me, and I decide I have got to find something more fun to do with my day before it's over. I just have to decide what. Mm. So I'm guessing that's probably Mac. We know that one's Klaus. Um, what's this one? There's a brochure on the dresser for a local art gallery. I flipped through it. That would be something different to do. But I wouldn't want to go alone. Who will make fun of the weird stuff with me? I wonder if Amos would go with me. Yay! Yes! That sounds like a nice time. I do like art galleries. Art galleries are nice. I find Ammo sitting on the floor in the living room. He's sprawled on the floor in a sea of puzzle pieces, but he's not looking at them. Instead, he's got his head propped up on the windowsill, idly watching the squirrels outside. Watch up to Amos. He straightens up as soon as he hears his name, and his air of boredom evaporates as he looks up at me. Oh, hi, Gales. Just doing a couple puzzles. A couple? I gesture to the thousands of mismatched pieces, puzzle pieces strewn all over the floor. Well, I finished all the ones you have, so I thought it might be fun to mix them all together and do them all at once. <laughs> you're insane, or wow, sounds like you're a puzzle expert. Yeah, he does sound like a puzzle expert. Just bored, mostly. Going somewhere? Looks like you found a brochure from the art gallery there. Oh, I take out the brochure and show him properly. Yeah, check it out. They've got a big modern art exhibition on right now. You interested? Well, sure. Admittedly, he doesn't really strike me as an art guy, but he perked up at the end of the invitation like he was just pleased to be going anywhere. Aw. See, I like people like that. I like people who are down for anything, which is like Ken, you know. Because that way, you know, I can choose what I want to do and they'll be okay with it. <laughs> yeah. I think I could have just said I wanted to hit the grocery store again and he would have been just as excited. He's like a puppy, flat bay. <laughs> oh, he wants to go for a car ride. <laughs> That's cute. Very cute. <laughs> oh my goodness, Gales. Look at all this. Amos looks around in awe at the small one-room gallery as if he were looking at the... Louvre? Louvre? Whatever. I guess I misread him. He's got an artistic, sensitive soul beneath all that, Amos. I didn't know you'd be so into this stuff. Of course. I mean, just look at this. Amos points to a vent grate that was stuck in the wall between two abstract sculptures. Wow, they even have air coming through it. What could it mean? <laughs> I try my best to hide my giggles. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? I think it means that the gallery has good air conditioning. <laughs> Let's ask him what he thinks. Amos takes a step back to ponder the piece, his hand on his chin. Maybe it's a metaphor for how art is the breath of life. Mm, that's, yeah. I suppose art is what you make of it. You might be onto something there, Amos. Yeah, totally. Art is definitely like that. It is open to tr interpretation. He seems happy that I approve of his interpretation and tries his hand at a couple more. Maybe he's not an experienced art critic, but I think he's got his heart in it. And that's what counts. We wander around the gallery for a little while, and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of it went over my head. I like art as much as the next person, but some of the stuff was really weird. I am really stuck on this one painting in particular. I can't really tell if I like this one or not. Is it a vegetable? What do you think? I think it's cool, but not that cool. Huh? It's rad-ish. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> I start with laughter, but it's not really because the joke is that funny. Amos is just so pleased with himself. That was awful. Then please forgive me if my jokes are a little corny. <laughs> I like corny jokes. I elbow him in the ribs and laugh. Awful. We laugh as we talk. Amos stops to squint at a painting. Say, I think Buggy could have made this. Buggy? Oh, that's right. Beatrice. His kid apprentice from the books. That's what he calls her. That joke isn't very original. No, I mean, look. 
Amos fishes his wallet out of his pocket, unfurling a sleeve of photographs. They all featured the same little girl. See? On my fridge here. Huh. There was almost the same painting. No way, I'm pretty sure it actually is exactly the same painting. Huh, well, what do you know? Oh, look at that. I glance where he's pointing and see there's a low table with art supplies set up in the corner. Try it yourself, the sign reads. It's clearly intended for children. There's not even any paintbrushes. Want to give it a spin? Sure, why not? I grab Amos's arm and pull him over to the table. I'll put it on my fridge if yours ends up nicer than mine. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, this is why it's good to have a son, because I do like to sometimes do kid stuff like this. And um, yeah, when you have a kid, it's less embarrassing <laughs> if you're an adult. <laughs> oh, let's not make it a competition. So he says, but he perked up when I suggested it. Amos smiles, but as we said, his fingers don't fit easily into the little containers of paint, but he doesn't let that slow him down. I doodle on the same paper as him, and soon enough, we, we've got a pretty cruddy landscape on our hands. <laughs> it's even got a little sun with sunglasses in the corner. We laugh the entire time. I haven't had this much fun in a while. Amos looks up from the paper to lock eyes with me. Oh, hold still. Amos brushes his thumb gently against my cheek. Oops. I touch my hand to my cheek and it comes back blue. Hey, we're finger painting, not face painting. <clears throat> it wasn't on purpose. You had some on your face. I was trying to wipe it off. A likely excuse. Now you hold still. W wait. I smear paint on his nose. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Aw, that's so cute. Just look at it a little bit. Aw. There's a couple paintbrushes there. They said there weren't, weren't paintbrushes. <laughs> but no, that's, that's cute. Nice. He laughs boisterously. It's infectious. He's quick to swipe some purple over my other cheek, and I get him back with green. Oh, big mistake. Amos overturns a pot of paint into his hand and tries to swipe at me. I dodge, and he tumbles off the child-sized bench and falls to the floor. Whoa. I don't think so. I take our painting and stick it right on his Fonda's forehead. <clears throat> I blow a raspberry at him. <clears throat> As he snatches it off his face and lunches at me. He catches me in a bear hug, but I know I'm going to have to paint all over the back of my shirt. No! Before we know it, we're having a full-on paint war <laughs> in the middle of an art gallery. I'm, I'm sure the they're going to appreciate that. It's getting everywhere except for the paper. Oh no. <laughs> so it's no surprise when we're asked to leave. Yep, I, I figured that was probably going to happen. <laughs> We have to drive home covered in paint, but I think the funny looks we got just made the whole day better. What I thought would be a quiet afternoon turned out to be really fun. Amos really does manage to make even the most mundane things exciting. What a day. I pretty much collapse onto my bed and fall asleep almost instantly. So I noticed that the music seems to change a little bit depending on which route you're on, which is pretty cool. You can hear it's slightly different than it was before, or when it, we were on uh, Klaus's route. Might be hard to hear though, because I got it turned down, but trust me, trust me on this. All right. <clears throat> Rise and shine. I wake up to the sound of Amos coming into my room, brandishing two coffee mugs. I rub the sleep out of my eyes and sit up. Morning, Amos. <clears throat> Gosh, what's wrong with my voice? You can give me more ghosts than that. Here, this will help. He hands me a coffee. I wasn't sure how you take it, so I just made it the Amos way. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a few sugar packets. No hard feelings if you mess with it. The Amos way isn't for everybody. <laughs> Thank you, but what's the occasion? You were sleeping in, so I thought you could use the pick-me-up. Was I? Must not have set my alarm. 
I'm a total zombie before I have my coffee. It's hard to imagine Ammo said anything other than maximum energy. Cheers to that. We click mugs and I take a sip. I almost spit it right back up. I didn't know coffee could get that bitter, and it has the consistency of tar. I'd have better luck chewing it. Ew! <laughs> the ammo sway, huh? Wakes you up, don't it? Alright, buddy. I'll see you downstairs. Amos takes off while I try to figure out what to do with the rest of this drink. If I poured it in a potted plant, the plant would definitely die. <laughs> I get ready for the day, going through my usual morning routine. When I get downstairs, everyone is waiting in the shop. Hey guys, good morning. There's a little chorus of greetings in response. I look around to see that all the craft supplies are out and ready to be used. I check the checklist to make sure we're on track. The do list, day one, clean up the place. Done. Day two, buy supplies, see back of note for a list of what we need. Yep, did that. Day three, design something fun for the display case. Getting an early start on the display. We didn't want to start without you, but yeah, we thought it would be nice to be ready. But then we couldn't agree on how to do it. Or rather, they couldn't see the fact that my idea was the best. I can see some people, Mac, getting ready to argue again, so I step in. Well, Rosamel and Amos had a great idea in the store. You know, the one with the cornucopia books. Oh yeah, we can do that, no problem. Why should we do their idea? What are the rest of us supposed to contribute? Labor? Uh, yes. I'm an ideas man. Uh, I don't know what a cornucopia is. There's a general murmur of uncertainty among Matt, Klaus, and Nightshade. Um... We did, we did that last time. Let's, let's try this one. Let's try picking randomly instead. Is that fair? More fair than picking favorites. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. The boys take the ritual very seriously. I plan it so it ends on Amos. Call me a cheat, but I value everything going smoothly over the sacred integrity of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> I demand a recount. I suspect foul play. Let it go, lad. Even the fates think your idea is the worst. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's only fair. Hardly. But it's your shop. If you want an ugly display, I suppose it's your call. Er, thanks. Here, why don't I make the background, and you each get to make one decoration to add to the display. Whatever you want. That seems to appease them. At least they seem satisfied that nobody is contributing more than the others. I was thinking of showcasing all your genres in the window display, so why don't you just make something to represent yourself? I think we can handle that. What do you say, boys? Fine. A simple enough task. I not a problem. What fun! Hmm. I breathe a sigh of relief as everyone starts digging through the craft supplies. Now I can get a start on the bulk window display. Shouldn't be too hard. It's mid-afternoon by the time I get the table set up. Now the worst part is trying to decide whether or not to put nails in the wall. I decide it has to be done. I'm up on a ladder, arm cocked it to hammer in the first nail when I feel a tug on the hem of my sweater. Amos is standing there, a shy smile on his face. Here, Gales. Hope you like it. Amos hands me a diorama. It's a mystery scene covered in tiny footprints and three-dimensional clues. It's really adorable and detailed. I bet there actually is a solvable mystery laid out in it. That's incredible. I bet Buggy always had the best project in class. <laughs> well, I never could stop myself help from helping a little. Oh, and I have Max here, too. He holds out an intricately carved wooden ship. He was too shy to bring it over himself. Don't be telling tales about me, Easterbrook. I look over toward the window where Mac is sitting and he immediately looks away. I giggle. 
It's beautiful, Mac. Ought to be. I climb down off the ladder and place the two pieces on the table. I'll set them up more intentionally when I got all the all of them. I give them a little nod and I'm just about to climb back up the ladder when Give it over, you great buffoon. Hmm. What? I whip my head over to see Nightshade trying to res wrestle a hot glue gun out of Klaus's hands. It looks a little bit like a squirrel trying to scrabble through a brick wall. <laughs> I rush over. What's going on here? Not that it's any of your affair, but I'm trying to finish my display element and this idiot is hogging the bonding agent. My horse. He holds out two halves of a crudely molded clay horse. It could really use some glue right about now. See? But it might be easier if you just fix it with more clay. It's not too dry yet. While Klaus is distracted, Nightshade snatches the glue gun from his hands. That's what I've been trying to tell him. Nightshade takes the gun and attaches a few more rhinestones to the pot of some alien looking plant he's gotten from who knows where. The pot is shakily pa painted to look like some galaxy. I couldn't guess the name and the of and the rhinestones are presumably stars. They're accurate too. Huh? The stars on the pot, they're an accurate map of my galaxy. A rhinestone becomes unstuck and falls to the floor. Mm. With a somewhat generous margin of error. Wow, that's really incredible, Doctor. I can't believe but how do you like my horse? Huh? Oh. Klaus is ho holding out his horse, now reunited as a single piece of a band of clay wrapped around its middle. It's, a uh, lovely, Klaus. Nay. <laughs> nice shade and I stare at Klaus as he gives the horse a little shake. Its two halves start sliding apart again. Poor thing. Just then, something sticky has popped on my head. I yelp in horror as some of the goo runs into my hair. Rosamel, He gasps dramatically. <gasps> oh my! You're beautiful! I take the thing off my head to see what he's talking about. It's a paper crown cut out rather clumsily with all sorts of bits and bobs glued on. Aren't you an artist? A poet! I don't normally do this kind of stuff, but it's pretty, isn't it? It brings out your eyes. It's unique. Oh, I need those. Klaus reaches over and plucks two googly eyes right off the ground. Ah! What? What? At the sound of the scream, Max stands up sad and suddenly smacking his head against the bookcase beside him. The bookcase starts to tilt. Uh-oh. Amos and Mac try to keep the bookcase from falling over. Give it back, you cretin! I glance back, to, and Nightshade and Klaus are fighting over the glue gun again, with Rosamel tugging on Klaus's other arm, desperately pleading for his jewels back. I guess it went as well as I could have expected. But I did get some very cute little trinkets out of it for the display, once the chaos died down. After cleaning up the mess we made, I throw myself down onto my bedspread, pulling out my aunt's list to cross off the final item. I was really worried when I first saw everything she wanted me to do in just one weekend, but it wasn't so hard. It didn't hurt that I had five more helpers than I was expecting. This weekend has been so busy, I feel like I barely got to know them. As tired as I am, I sit up in bed, determined to go spend some more time with one of the guys before they have to go home tomorrow. Who should it be? Of course, we're gonna do ammos. I head out to see if I can find him. I wonder if he's still working on those puzzles. I picked into the living room to check, but when I turned around, wham, ouch. I rubbed my nose where I had slammed right into Amos' chest. Oh, Gales, are you okay? I'm so glad I found you. You are? Amos seems really out of breath. Yeah, I, well, I thought since we had such a good time at the museum, or at, or at least I did, I don't know about you, but maybe you wanna go to a movie with me. Not that movies have much in common with museums, it's just that I like to hang out with you again. He's talking in a nervous stream of consciousness and holds up a pair of trinkets that say, Rainbow Theater Drive-In. I love drive-ins, how did you know? I do love drive-ins. 
Me too. I can't wait. They're showing The Werewolf's Revenge. Ooh. A horror movie? I'm a pretty big Brady cat. I love horror. I, I am kind of a Brady cat. Yeah. Oh, I should have asked. I didn't realize. Amos looks really apologetic. But if you're there with me, I should be okay. I'll make sure no werewolves get ya. Aw, oh, that's sweet. Okay, then. It's a date. Yipes, I mean, not a date like that. Just a, you know, a get-together. Soiree. A shindig? <laughs> I got you, detective. Let's go. I want to make sure we get good seats. It's a crisp fall evening. We file in the drive-in with the tens of other cars of couples and families who came to see a good old-fashioned monster movie. Look at it real quick. Oh, uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice. We pick up a bucket of popcorn and a large soda pop to share and roll the top down on my car so we can see the 50-foot raggedy old drive-in screen standing in at the front of the field of vehicles. The preview shudder to the start and I can see the moon shining on the screen and in the night sky above it. It's beautiful. I saw a movie like this with Buggy once. Oh? Big mistake. She wouldn't come out from under her covers until I made her hot chocolate and read her a whole article on the family... Oh gosh. Oh. Coxinella day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna try to say that again. <laughs> she was really in she was really into ladybugs at the time. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. She didn't struggle with any of the vocabulary? <laughs> no. She explained half the darn thing to me, actually. <laughs> I smile at him incredulously. When she gets into something, she gets into something. She sounds like you. <laughs> yeah. I guess in a lot of ways, she is. Oh, I think it's starting. Shh. You should. Amos throws a piece of popcorn at me and it bounces harmlessly off my forehead. I giggle. The dramatic film music blares into the car from the radio and I settle down into the seat to watch the show. It's a little bit colder than I anticipated, but I try to focus on the movie. The first few scenes pass by before I really begin to shiver. Gales, is it getting too cold? Uh-huh. A little. Hold on. He takes off his heavy trench coat and drapes it over me. Ah, such a gentleman. It's still warm and about three sizes too big. <laughs> Ideal coziness. There you go. Aren't you going to be cold? Don't worry about it. I'm tougher than I look. He gives me what I'm sure he thinks is a brave smile, but it just shows off his already chattering teeth. Aw. <laughs> I roll my eyes. I don't think so. Here, take a look in the back seat. I'm pretty sure there's a blanket back there. Amos leans over and pulls a, a thick wool knit blanket out of the back seat I keep, that I keep for emergencies. You never know when you're going to break down in a snowstorm. Or need a nap. <laughs> or find yourself on a date with a hot detective who gave you his trench coat. <laughs> Did you want the bat blanket instead then? Yeah! Let's both fit under there. I wouldn't want you to get cold. Oh, so you're taking the coat and the blanket. So I'm chilly. Sue me. I stick out my tongue at him. Yeah, that's totally the reason it's cold because I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Emma throws the blanket over the two of us. It's a little small, so I have to snuggle in close. Wow, small blanket. You don't mind, do you? No, I don't think I do. Sufficiently cozy, we turn our attention back to the screen. The movie runs for about ten minutes before Amos points, a handful of popcorn in his hand. That guy's the werewolf. What? I mean, the innkeeper is trying to figure out who the werewolf is and stop the murders, right? Well, it's the guy he's letting stay in his barn for free. It's so obvious. How do you figure that? He wasn't even in the town when the barman was killed. Nah, he was hiding in the woods. Look, you could see the footprints in the background. Do they even put details like that into movies? Sure. 
I think they're going to cut back to them later. Just you wait. He flips a kernel of popcorn into the air and catches it in his mouth. All right, Mr. Big Shot Detective, we'll see about. Just then, the film flashes back to the footprints. Ammo shoots me a self-satisfied look. I bump him with my shoulder. Okay, so you're a master sleuth for real, no joke. And don't you forget it. We sat in a warm silence while the innkeeper crept into the basement, investigating a mysterious sound. Oh no. The sound was coming from behind him now. Oh no! Suddenly a claw slammed down on the innkeeper's shoulder, and the car rattled with the sound of his screams and shrill violins. Ah! <laughs> Should we grab him or spill popcorn on him? I kind of like both ideas. We'll grab him. I nearly jump out of my skin, grabbing hard into Amos' arm and hiding my face in his shoulder. Whoa. You alright? Mm-hmm. I'm still hiding in his shoulder. Yeah, I, to I totally would. This is totally me when I watch scary movies. I can't watch them. Nope. I, I usually, you know, use a pillow or, or a stuffed animal or something to hide my face. <laughs> but, you know, a, you know, a hot detective guy, that, that, that would work too. Yeah. The music changes and Amos taps my shoulder. It's over now. You can look. Aw. Aw, that's a nice picture. I like that. Very pretty. Hmm. Really like the lighting. The lighting from the from the movie. Yeah. Excellent job. I peek out from behind him and I can see that his face has gone red even though he isn't looking at me. You sure? He turns to me now and gives me a soft smile. Would I lie to you? I smile back. I turn back to the movie, but I don't move away from Amos. A few moments pass before he fakes a yawn, stretching his arms exaggeratedly out over his head. Slowly, as if trying not, not to startle a deer, he lowers his arm over my shoulder. Classic move, Amos classic. He makes a point to look at else anywhere but me, but like he was pretending his arm had a mind of its own, completely divorced from what he may or may not want to put it around. When I don't protest, he pulls me closer. I smile. What a corny move. Corny, but adorable. You're a dork. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Classics are classic for a reason. <laughs> Sorry, I was wrong. You're a mega dork. Dork supreme. <laughs> we laugh. Even with that goofy smile, I can't help but notice how pretty he is. I keep close and we watch the movie together. Though if I'm honest, I wasn't paying attention anymore. When we make it back home, it's pretty late and we try to be as quiet as possible while we kick off our shoes and hang up our coats. Unfortunately, <laughs> shh. we both look at each other and burst out laughing. <laughs> shh, shh, be quiet. I can't, you're making me laugh. What's going on out there? Who's making all that racket? <laughs> oh. We clap our hands over our mouths to stifle the fresh round of giggles and sneak up the stairs as quickly as we can. Well, good night, Gales. Aren't you... Uh, come on, are you tired already? Wait, Amos, I don't think I can sleep yet. Hmm? I don't know if it's the movie or Nightshade, but my brain is racing. Do you want to stay up a little longer? I... Well, sure. A couple more hours couldn't hurt. Great, let's see. What should we do? Puzzle? No way. You've done all the puzzles here a hundred times. Then I'm out of ideas. Guess you've not, you're not the brains of the outfit after all. Hmm, well, we live in a bookshop. Shop. Let's read a book. Any suggestions? You're a book, right? Would that be weird to read about you, I mean? Oh, sure, we can do that. My book is kind of a case file more than anything. Great. I can't wait to hear all about your adventures. Oh boy, I can't wait until you read The Case of the Snake Charmer. See, in the end, I... Ah, ah, I don't need any more spoilers this evening. We'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah, I don't like spoilers. Yeah. Hamo scurries over to the little pile of bo magic books and grabs his off the top. In that case, whenever you're ready. 
Let's read it in my room so we don't bother anybody. Your room? Oh, come on. It's not that dirty in there. I don't think that's what he's nervous about. <laughs> I grab him by the arm and drag him inside. <laughs> I settle in on the edge of the bed and he pulls over a chair from the vanity. I open the book to the first mystery, scanning the introduction. Ooh, picture. Yeah, nice. Very glad. Very cool. Very noir. The neon red lights from the restaurant across the street tended to creep into Amos' office at night, even when he had the curtains drawn. They made the edges of his scratched-up desk glow a dim pink and made his eyes strain as he tried to read his papers. He sighed and pulled the little chain on his green banker's lamp. The sudden light, weak as it was, made him flinch. He always managed to forget to turn his desk lamp on until he was being forced to read by second-hand neon. Leaning back in his leather chair, he rubbed his sore eyes. He'd been on this case for a week straight and made almost no headway. No new, lead, no new leads, new, no clues. Nothing in his cluttered stacks of old case files tied to the kidnapping. His filing cabinets were crammed to bursting with the things they... And they were no help at all. He looked at his clock. 4 a.m. No good going home now. Amos leaned his head on his desk, feeling a two-hour nap was better than nothing when there was a knock at the door. I don't know who this is, but... Mr. Easterbrook, I saw your light come on, and I think I'm in trouble. Huh? Angela? Oh, a femme fatale. Who's she? I think maybe that's enough of that case for now. <laughs> Amos slipped to the table of contents quickly, his face red. <laughs> dim, late, dim lighting, late nights, femme fatales, you're just like a real detective. All you're missing is the smoky air for the light to filter through. <laughs> I am a real detective, and I quit smoking when Bucky started coming around more. It was a bad influence. Very noble of you. Well, if that story's a no-go, tell me about another mystery you solve. Let's see. I want to read about the funniest one. And this collection? Hmm. Amos leans over in my shoulder, and I flip the pages back to the table of con contents. Well, I remember get really getting a chuckle out of this one. The Missing Mutt? Yep. See, this little Maltese dog completely disappeared while we were on a trip to New York City, and we were hearing all about how the place was infested with coyotes and hog-sized rats, so she... Amos, if you're going to tell me a story about a dog getting eaten by rats, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing like that. This rich lady lost her white dog in Central Park, then got followed home by a brown dog. I, I don't think I'm telling it very well. Amos's face grows red because he can see me hiding my laugh behind my hand as he loses his train of thought. Just, maybe you should read. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it out of the book. Oh, another picture. Aw, look at the puppy. Oh. Alright. Amos lunged out of the cab, his coat still wet up to the waist from where he had waded into the pond. He almost lost his balance, trying to shake a stray bundle of pond weed from his shoe, but managed to catch the door handle with his free hand. Uh, Mrs. Trottenham, ma'am, don't go into that meeting. I have Tootsie right here. Mr. Easterbrook? Emma stumbled over to her and handed her the sopping wet mass of fur and wriggling animal, which she took instinctively into her arms, not noticing the growing water stain the dog's thrashing was leaving on her satin blast. Let's see, but where on earth did you find her? She was with you the whole time. That mutt you kept shooing away, that was Tootsie after she'd finally finished her little impromptu mud bath. Seems like even if you didn't recognize her, she recognized you. Oh. oh, oh, my sweet darling, how could I not recognize my sweet angel? Mommy is so sorry for all those nasty things she said to you. Not to worry, ma'am. I know you were stressed. No hard feelings. Mrs. Uh, Tottenham's eyes flashed with fury before she visibly and with great effort replaced it with gratitude. You'll find I'm a very generous woman, Mr. Easterbrook. How can I ever repay you for the return of my sweet tootsie? Ah, Amos scratched his chin and thought for a moment. This didn't seem like the kind of case he should bill with his usual fare. How's the price of dry cleaning sound? <laughs> That's incredible. That really happened? Well, it happened to me. 
That kind of stuff pops up everywhere I go, really. Hard to catch a break. I imagine. Just look at this next one, Penny Arcade. Another baby mystery, or was this one an easy one too? By the sound of the title, I think it's probably about some kids' tickets going missing at the fair. But if I learned anything from mystery novels, it's that looks can be deceiving. No, no. That one was definitely one of my more difficult cases. Not so much in solving it, but in trying to figure out how to break the truth to the family. Aw, this is sad. This sounds terrible. Glad I managed to be tactful. By the look on his face, I can tell it still weighs on him. Yeah. It started out as a standard hired by the wife to catch cheating husband plot. They're never fun, but when I found out how much their kid was involved, it was a tough call. I try to keep out of family stuff these days because of it. I don't really have the words for it. It's probably faster if you just take a look. No. Amos watched the brown Dodge Caravan pull out of a parking lot and head south on the 15th. It was like clockwork. 2 o'clock, pick up Freddy. 2.15, get to the arcade. Then 2.30, book it to Miss Beecham's place on Park and 15. Amos rolled up his window and sat back in his old leather seat with the house key, the credit card bills, and the uh, damning photographs. Amos could leave it there. Jake was screwed. He shifted his card into drive, but something stopped him from hitting the gas. The last piece of the puzzle. Freddy. Why did he lie? Freddy lied about his dad being with him every Saturday and was the only one who could have hidden the key. He knew, and he lied. If there was one thing Amos couldn't stand, it was an unfinished puzzle. He walked through the parking lot and into the arcade where the blinking lights and shrill electronic noises peer pierced his already pounding skull like an ice pick. He peered into the room and spotted Freddy's bright red hair all the way from the door. Amos saw Freddy's shoulders slump in disappointment, and Amos knew it was game over. He walked over. Hey, buddy. You remember me from before, right? Oh, yeah. Amos, right? Mom's friend. Freddy turned to him and smiled. He was missing a front tooth. Yeah, that's right. I was wondering. Amos trailed off. What was he wondering? Why this kid had protected his father? Why he wanted to keep his family together? Jesus Christ. Amos knew what the rest of this kid's day was going to be like. By the time he left the, this arcade, Amos would have called Linda and laid it all out. His family would be broken. Damn it. He rubbed his palm across his face and sighed. Why couldn't people just... Amos didn't understand how someone could leave behind a kid like this for some fling, and then getting the kid involved. Have him cover for you? He felt his heart hand ball up into a fist. It was always the family cases that were, were the worst. Yeah, that is pretty terrible. That, that's like worst father of the year. Yeah. Definitely. Amos, are you okay? Freddy looked worried. Amos was about to ruin his life, and Freddy looked worried about him. He hated this. He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Yeah, Fred, I'm fine. Just got a headache is all. I was up past my bedtime last night. I did have a question for you, though. Freddy looked startled and began to worry the hem of his shirt. Uh-oh? Yeah. You... Uh, you want to teach me how to play Street Fighter? Buggy always beats me, and it's embarrassing. Oh yeah, sure. I'm great at Street Fighter. Look, I got the high score. Freddy's face lit up, and it was like those nerves had never been open, been there. He was a kid in our arcade on a Saturday, and I almost helped, hoped it was a good one. Aw. Whoa, heavy. Yeah, family cases are tough for me. I ended up sticking around a little bit afterward picking Freddy out for ice cream and stuff while Linda and Jake were at the lawyers, you know. Wow, that's really above and beyond. Oh, it was nothing much, really. I just know how hard it can be when your family is splitting up. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you were divorced. Ugh, no, I'm not. I've never... I was talking about Buggy. Oh. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> I mean... Of course what Freddy was going through was different. Those were his parents, after all. And Buggy was never actually mine, but... It's a big change, not seeing someone you care about as much as you used to. 
I think it's real important for people to be able to lean on people, you know? We need each other. When Buggy went away to private school, I was so happy for her, but a little sad, too. That's love for you, huh? If I've learned anything in my business, it's feelings, and the people that they're attached to are kind of messy. Amos. Don't get me wrong, I'm not lonely or anything. Especially not now that I've got you and the guys. He looks at me with an earnestness that's almost painful. You're the best pal a fellow could ask for, Gales. Ah, uh, just, just pal? Or likewise, big guy. Yeah. Just pal? Sh sure. Aren't we friends? Friendship isn't exactly what I had in mind. Amos tilts his head a little confused. I lean in, bringing my face close to Amos's. Oh. Oh. I, uh, gulp. <laughs> I press my nose against his, and he falls off his chair with a thud. <laughs> We're still for a moment before bursting out into uproarious laughter. Amos stands back up and barrels me over with a hug, pushing me back against the bed as we laugh. When our giggles finally subside, he hovers over me with a starry-eyed, breathless look. Do you really mean it? Yes, Amos. I mean it. I like you. Like... Like, like me? <laughs> I guess we have to spell it out. I start laughing again. Hey, you shouldn't laugh like that. I'm a real sensitive guy. <laughs> he tries to sound offended as if he isn't laughing too. If you don't quit laughing, I'll have no choice but to faint in misery. Uh-oh, too late. I'm fainting. Emma's lets his arms buckle and he falls right on top of me. Ugh, you big lug, you're gonna crush me. Can't hear you, fainted. You brought this fate onto yourself. After a pay playful struggle, I finally managed to roll Amos off me, and we lay there side by side, catching our breath. Hey, Gales. Yeah? I'm really glad I met you. I'm rusty with all this lovey stuff, but if I manage to charm you somehow, I must be a pretty lucky son of a gun. You know, that movie we saw was kind of scary. Will you stay with me tonight? Just so I can get to sleep. Of course. I'll protect you from werewolves and any other creepy crawlies that try to disturb you. Emos flexes and puffs out his chest before snuggling close to me. Aww. He puts his glasses on the nightstand and shuts off the lamp. Laughter still lingers in the air. The next morning, I wake up a little chilly. I reach for the blanket, give it a little tug, and... Thud. Ah, my tibia. <laughs> Oh, let's look at his pajamas. Aw, oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> uh, holy crap! I lean over the edge of the bed and see Ammo sprawled on the floor, tangled in sheets. Uh, I don't think my shoulder bends that way. I can't help but giggle. How did you fall off the bed? I think I'm not used to sharing. I blush. Me neither, ah ha ha ha. Well, you're gonna have to get used to it, pal. Yeah, get used to it. Amos's face flushes. I drop a pill on his face and laugh as I hear his muffled yelp from underneath. Maybe we will. Get used to it, I mean. If you want, that is. I think I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. I crawl off the bed to kiss him on the nose. Hot dog. <laughs> I giggle and pepper his face with kisses. I think that dopey look on his face might be permanent. <laughs> Aww. It's not dopey. It's adorable. Of course, I'll have to find a job in the area. If they aren't looking for private eyes, I've got other marketable skills. No problem. I won't be a bum. You think you'd really like it, staying here? Well, if I'm honest, it's not too different from where I came from. And even if it were, I don't know, lend an axe or something, I'd stay anywhere with you. Aww, that's really sweet of you to say. I mean it too. I think... I feel my breath catch. I think I love you, Gales. My heart swells and I feel my face flush. I can't help but pull him into a tight hug. I think I love you too, Amos. I can hear his heart racing in his chest. He puts a hand on my head gently and lets out a deep breath. That's good. I was kind of nervous there for a second. 
I laugh and bury my face in his chest. Was I not obvious enough for the big shot detective? Hey, I pick up clues, not hints. <laughs> Just teasing. Just then, I hear his stomach growl. Hungry, big guy? Famished. We head into the kitchen, where the other boys are already seated. It almost looks like we're interrupting a meeting. The leopards finally awaken! Be respectful. Don't look at them. Klaus looks off into the distance, determined not to make eye contact with us. You don't have to do that. Klaus makes silent, unbroken eye contact instead. <laughs> okay, you can go back to not looking, actually. Not looking was better. <laughs> Ignore the lads. There's something wrong with them. We're happy for you, knuckleheads. Happy? Speak for yourself. Don't tell us about it. I don't want to know anything. It, it wasn't like that, really. I said I don't want to know anything. But think, we have to be right when things are getting exciting. It's not your excitement to have. Oh yeah, it's your last day here, isn't it? Fortunately. It was different being here. Don't be afraid to call on us again sometime. I'm always happy to bend a hand whenever it's needed. <laughs> right, okay. Take care of Gales. Of course. Files nods, then leaves the room. Is... is he going? Not before I do. Nightshade rushes into the next room. Rosamel and Mac follow. Should we follow them? With the way the warning's been going, I'd rather not. But I guess we should. We make it just in time to see them climb, and probably into their books. Bye guys, we'll miss you. We wave them off, Amos's hands slipping into mine. Just you and me now, huh? I give his hand a little squeeze and lean my head on his shoulder. I wouldn't have it any other way, big guy. Aww. I can't believe I almost forgot. Today is the grand reopening of the shop, which means my aunt will be back any minute. How am I gonna explain this? Yay, we did it! Yay! It was very good. Very sweet. Not gonna do too much of the review part because I've already reviewed it. I've already said it. I still feel the same way. So unless that changes, which I doubt, I'm sure they're all the all the endings are gonna be great. Yeah, this is definitely a definitely a five star VN. Very impressive. Very good. Love the characters. Loved Amos's route. Very nice. Very nice guy. Like I said, probably my type, at least in real life anyway. Yeah, that's that that's all for now. So, thanks for watching. Bye.